Welcome to Tales of Honor, a podcast with a mission to tell the true stories of every recipient of our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Tales of Honor podcast. Hope you are doing well wherever it is that you are and whatever generic time of day this is. I don't want to say good morning, good evening, or good afternoon because, well, you all can do this whenever you want. Uh, But... I don't have anything really to go over today except for one birthday, and it was yesterday, November 20th, 1941. This birthday belongs to Walter Marm Jr., so a very happy birthday to Walter. He is a former U.S. Army colonel that received the Medal of Honor for his actions in the Vietnam War. So again, a very happy birthday, happy 80th birthday to Walter Marm. I covered his story way back on episode number 73, and there will be a link in the show notes for you to click and read the story if you so wish to, and I do recommend that you do. Um, Let's see here. One other thing before we get into today's episode, uh, I I had mentioned on a previous episode that I was able to find a, a, a database that enables me to find Mostly naval recipients, um, uh, older re- naval recipients, and photos. There's actually a really cool archive of photos. And uh, today's episode, I was able to find a plethora of photos. And going all the way back to about the age of 15-ish, give or take a little bit, all the way through retirement. It's pretty cool. So while you're over on TalesOfHunterPodcast.com reading Mr. Marm's story, you can also go over to the episode that you're listening to right now and... Uh, check out. You can read the story and check out the photos. So really appreciate that. That's all I got for today. So let's jump right on into today's Tale of Honor. Frank was born on the 23rd of November, 1855 in Oskaloosa, Iowa. And at the age of 14, he was appointed as a cadet midshipman at the U.S. Naval Academy. He graduated five years later and received a commission to Ensign. Frank served on nine ships and was stationed at the Washington Navy Yard over the first 13 years of his service, as well as serving two years at the Bureau of Ordnance. By 1898, he was a rear admiral and took command of the USS Eagle for three years. Frank was transferred to the Asiatic Fleet in 1905 and served as its chief of staff and then commander-in-chief before commanding the USS Raleigh and then returning to the States. He completed the Naval War College, and when the U.S. landed at Veracruz for the Mexican campaign, Frank was in charge, and his actions later earned him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For distinguished conduct in battle, engagements of Veracruz, 21-22 April, 1914. Under fire, Rear Admiral Fletcher was eminent and conspicuous in the performance of his duties, was senior officer present at Veracruz, and the landing and the operations of the landing force were carried out under his orders and directions. In connection with these operations, he was at times on shore and under fire. After the campaign, Frank commanded the Atlantic Fleet and was promoted to Admiral on the 10th of March, 1915. He received the Medal of Honor in December of 1915, and his nephew, Frank Jack Fletcher, was a Navy lieutenant at Veracruz and also received the Medal of Honor for that campaign. During World War I, Frank was a member of the General Board, the Joint Army and Navy Board, now known as the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the War Industries Board. Frank received the Navy and Army Distinguished Service Medals for his work during the war and retired at the customary rank of Rear Admiral on the 23rd of November, 1919, his 64th birthday, after 44 years of service. Frank Friday Fletcher died five days after his 73rd birthday in 1928, and he is buried with his wife Susan in Arlington National Cemetery, Section 3, Lot 1933. Due to his contributions to advancements in ordnance and torpedo warfare doctrine, a new class of U.S. Navy destroyers were named the Fletcher Class Destroyers. From 1942 to 1944, 175 Fletcher Class Destroyers were commissioned, more than any other class of destroyers. The lead ship for this class, the USS Fletcher DD-445, was named in honor of Frank, and it received 15 battle stars during World War II and five for the Korean War. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor, and if you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe and tell your friends and family. Tales of Honor is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme music is Loyalty and Duty by Floru's Music. 
If you have any questions, you can send an email to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And please be sure to visit talesofhonorpodcast.com for more episodes and information. Thank you.